Elaine. Yes, sir. You missed it yesterday. Sorry? You missed it yesterday. Yes, sir. Because I have a work yesterday. Oh, I understand. But Pedro did a made a nice gesture for the church yesterday. Yeah, I saw it sir, in the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> that was very generous of him you know yes sir you know no, no one made him he did it because he's feeling like part of the family mm. and he is part of our family yes okay well i'm the only guy here so i guess i'm doing the prayer uh nalin what you got give me a moment Uh, my prayer, sir, for today, aside from uh, Thanksgiving, sir, uh, it's uh, for tomorrow, sir. I hope everything will be okay for tomorrow for your preparation, sir. Okay. Vanessa. Yes, sir. Thanks for the continuously blessings and for tomorrow, of course. We're always praying for you, sir. Thank you. Uh, let's let Fred in the room. Fred, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Morning. Grab good morning. Ball, be, grab your ball pen, brother. All righty. Let me uh, make sure. Check one. All right. Let's see. all right i'm ready all right uh the lynn and vanessa have given us their prayer request uh my surgery which is 24 hours and 24 minutes from now according to the clock uh there so far that's been our prayer we got that covered okay mm -hmm. mommy For health and strength, sir. Okay. How's the other prayer request you had the other day? Uh, what was it, sir? Calm and peace. Uh, calm and peace, yeah. <laughs> okay. Is that coming? Is that been fulfilled? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, see, that's God answers prayers, right? Yes, sir. Larissa, good morning. Morning, sir. Uh, a prayer request for my mother because she she has a cough. She has a cough. Yes. Okay. And Thanksgiving also for okay. everything that we received. Okay. Anna. Good health for everyone, sir. Okay. Elaine. Uh, good health for my family and successful surgery for you, sir, tomorrow. Thank you. Uh, the, the surgery won't be bad. The rehab will be terrible. Uh, Fred, put yes. Nalin on there. She has, she has mumps right now. The mumps, the mumps return. We're good to go. Whatever your prayer requests are, brother. You said no, Lynn. You had yes. mumps. Okay. Okay. Are we ready? Please bear with me. Lord, we come before you. Give me thanks. Thank you for uh, this day. Because each and every day is, is a blessing from the Lord. And each and every day we want to use to glorify you in each and every, in, in any way that you 
you direct us and guide us. That's why at the present time, we want to ask for prayers for those who, which concerned about health and strength, like Anna, ask for health and strength for herself and her loved ones, Wilma as well. The land we lift up for healing for her um, as far as um, having mumps, we pray for it. Symptoms to be minimized and quick recovery. And Elaine asked for prayers for also health. We lift up uh, Ernest in prayer for his healing, for his steadfastness and his uh, quick and recovery. We're thankful, Lord, for all that you do and for your guidance in our lives. Uh, Larissa asked for prayers for our health. For mom who has a cough, pray, Lord, for her to uh, um, be of service to her mom and for her mom to uh, do things to, to be focused on her quick recovery and uh, may it be used as a springboard to her understanding that the uh, importance of having a relationship with you with or without a cough. But uh, in this life, we will, it, it will not be perfect. We will have issues, concerns, problems, uh, broken relationships. But know that uh, you are the provider and the, uh, uh, and the answer uh, for all our concerns. And as you lead us in this life, to greener pastures while we live this life, if we're obedient, and to perfect green pastures after this life, if we've obeyed you in baptism and in faithful service, uh, being your faithful ambassadors and being your hands that minister to the lost, to the lame, to the blind, spiritually speaking in jesus we pray amen amen okay uh if you remember there were two week two words last week that we spoke about that were for creation one is for creating from existing and one is creating from nothing does anybody remember those two words Bara and Asa. And Asa. What's, what do they mean? Bara said, create something out of nothing. And Asa is, means create from existing materials. Very good. Okay, so as we've moved forward in creation, the creative process is really coming to an end. Uh, there's only living conscious creatures that are left to be brought. And as we look at this section of scripture, we see the words both bara and asa are used to describe the creative process. Three important areas that we want to look at here. Genesis 1.1. Uh, somebody grab it. That's actually, hold on. That's not going to be Nalin this morning. One, one, please. Genesis 1, 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Out of nothing. Then the continued creative process uh, forming or the making is noted. Uh, the conscious life, Genesis chapter 1, verse 21. Vanessa? Genesis chapter 1, verse 21 says, So God created the great sea creatures and every living creature that moves, 
with which the water swarms according to their kinds, and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw what, that it was good. Okay. So, uh, what's remaining? What left? What is left to be done? Wilma, give us verse 27. Verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Okay. And when it says that he created them in the image of God, what word is used there? And what makes that word significant? What is the word for God that is used in Genesis chapter 1, verse 27? Elohim. Elohim. Why is that important? It's a plural noun. It's not a singular noun. It's a plural noun. This is our first peek at really what will develop throughout scripture as the Trinity. Uh, the creation of conscious life is man. And he's forming or making a third time. And we can see a little bit more just details that go with that. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7, Larissa. Genesis 2, verse 7. Then the Lord God formed the man of dust from the ground and writh into his nostril the writh of life, and the man became a living creature. Okay. Uh, now we're going to take a look at Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. And that's going to be Anna. Genesis chapter 2, verse 18 says, Then the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. Okay, so he's going to make man a helper do you know who that man's going to be or who that helper is going to be anna eve it will be does she bring problems with her yes okay uh that's 18 19 please elaine genesis chapter 2 verse 19 it says here now out of the ground the Lord God had formed every beast of the field and every bird of the heavens and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its, that was its name. Okay. That's 19. 20, please, Fred. So Adam gave names to all the cattle to the birds of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not a, not found a helper compatible, com, com, comparable. No comparable, okay. Comparable for him. Okay, now a couple of things. Comparable, I want to point out. it says, in my version it says comparable for him, to him. Okay. Uh, Pay attention here, because there's something I want people to be aware of. Name your favorite kind of dog, Nalin. Uh, Pitbull. Pitbull. Vanessa? Poodle, sir. Poodle. Poodle. Okay. Wilma? Uh, 
Oscar. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Larissa? K9, sir. K9. There's a bunch of different canines. Canine refers to training. What specific? I, you, the big one, sir. I don't know the ex exactly the name. Okay, probably a German Shepherd dog. Yeah, yes. Uh, Anna. Shih Tzu, sir. Shih Tzu. Okay. Elaine. Shih Tzu also, sir. Shih Tzu also. Fred. Husky. Husky. Okay. Are they different? Yes. No, they're not. No, it's now, still the dog. They have been bred to be, will have different appearances. And the way they do that is by selective breeding. They want them bigger, they want them smaller. They want them black, they want them white, they want them brown. You can select these, but this does not change the fact that they're still dogs. Uh, by the way, nobody said boxer. Uh, <laughs> boxers, poodles, Lhasa Apsos, Chih Tzus, Pit Bulls, and even, by the way, Ascal. Wilma, help us out here a second. What does an Ascal look like? It's an ordinary dog. It is dog. Yeah. Genetically, it is dog. They did a search uh, some years ago. I heard from my vet that they had done a test where they took seven pedigreed females and three pedigreed males from 10 different breeds and allowed them to intermingle at will. Do you know in four generations what you have? Dog. Medium size brown dog, 35, 40 pounds with medium brown hair. The husky, the poodle, the chih tzu, the lhasa apso, the boxer dog, the great dane, the saint bernard, they've all disappeared and gone back to what their DNA blueprint says that they are. You can breed selectively for size. You can breed selectively for temperament, but you do not change the DNA. You understand what, am I making sense? Do you guys understand where my point is? A Husky really is no different from a Poodle. They look different. They may be a different size. They may be have a different body. But if you allow them to intermingle, then their DNA goes back to being dog and they look neither like a poodle nor a Lhasa Apso. So when God made kinds, that's what we're referring to. Uh, I got too busy talking. Larissa, you read, Anna read, Elaine, Fred. Uh, Fred yeah, Fred read. Nalin, next verse, please. Genesis chapter 2, verse 21. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and while he slept, took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. Closed up its place with flesh. Okay, 22, please, Vanessa. And 22 says, And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Okay. By the way, when I was a young boy, we used to hear people uh, talk about how men had one fewer rib than women did. You ever heard that? You know what that's called? Ignorance. <laughs> close enough Brad that answers the question because men don't have one fewer rib than women do we have the same number of ribs uh, 23 Wilma verse 23 then the man said this at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. 
23. 24, Larissa. 24. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall be become one flesh. Okay. A couple of things that we need to keep in mind here. A man, by the way, a woman also, need to leave their mother and their father. So there's a leaving part of making the couple. Then there is the cleaving part, holding together. And then there is the two shall become one flesh. And there is truthfully more to the two shall become one flesh than merely the activity that brings about children. Okay, there is a process whereby after you've been married a while, Fred, can you sometimes finish your wife's sentence or know the answer to a question be, that she gets asked before she says anything? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's a byproduct of becoming one. Mm. That's how you learn each other. By the way, it says... Does it say wife? Anna? Uh, what do you mean, sir? Does it say wife in the verse that was just read? Ah, uh, yes, sir. What about girlfriend? Does it say girlfriend? No, sir. It's different. <laughs> Does it say nubia? No. Does it say Joa? No, sir. <laughs> <laughs> What's that, Nubia and Joa? Say again. I said, you. if you speak in tongues, you have to have an interpreter, the Bible says. <laughs> okay. <What> is... <laughs> nu Nubia is a, N-U-B-I-A, is a transliteration of the Spanish word Nubia, which means girlfriend. Mm -hmm. uh, and Joa is just the contemporary slang for girlfriend, uh, significant other, hmm. yeah, okay? Our society teaches us that we can become one with whom? I, I saw your Everyone. lips move, Anna. Become husband and wife, become one. Right, but our society teaches you need to be married? Is that what our society teaches? In the Bible, sir. What does our society teach? You mm, muted, Lynn. If no, you Lynn, love muted. one another, then what? that's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's because in English, there's how many words for love are there in English? One. One. In other languages, there are different words that represent different kinds of love. And Anna, unmute because I'm going to talk to you for a minute, okay? Yes, sir. What, you re what our society really teaches, when you love... That means you get hot and bothered for somebody of the opposite sex, okay? When you mm -hmm. lust after someone, it's okay. Mm -hmm. And that, by the way, is what our <laughs> society commonly defines as what? Love? Lust. Well, understand. But what does our society call it? Mm, they call it also love. They use the word, right? Yes. Wilma. Sure. In the ancient languages, the word love is not a noun. It is an adjective. What would the difference be? Your adjective describes a noun. <laughs> uh, well, love. No, take love out of it. 
and what, since you're the English teacher, we're going to pick on you for a minute, okay? Mm. If I use a noun, what is a noun? Noun is a name person. of a person, place, or thing. Person. Very good. So that's a noun. We think love is a noun. What is an adjective? Describes a noun. Describes an action. Mm -hmm. Correct? Yeah. If we have a noun it doesn't require that we do anything mm -hmm. do you need to, you're sitting on a chair right that's a noun yes sir do you have to do anything to make that a chair no no it's a noun right yes sir if i said you are sitting it's an adjective right yes sitting on you the are chair. now you are now doing it mm -hmm. okay love is an adjective it's the things that you do it's when you tolerate your spouse's quick temper sometimes it's when you tolerate their unkind words sometimes it's when you show patience kindness goodness it's when you do the things that we're supposed to do. That's how you become one. When you are willing to sacrifice for the other person and they sacrifice for right. you. You know, it's not, it's not a one-way street uh, as, Brad, you can tell me if I'm too old school. This is not a street downtown called one way. This is something we do for each other, okay? By the way, I'm gonna ask you a question and we're gonna go off topic here a little bit this morning. In times gone by, not today, in times gone by, parents of the man and the woman selected your spouse, correct? Okay. Today, do your parents choose your spouse or do you just get with the first, do you just get with the person who gets you hot and bothered? Larissa? Uh, so uh, today, uh, of course, uh, I choose the one I love. <laughs> okay. Now I have a question for you. Is it better now? Or was it better before? <laughs> what do you mean by that? Sense? For our society, is ah. it better the way we do it now? Or was it better the way they did it before? Um, it depends on... It depends, sir, on the situation. For our society, there is no depends. Uh, okay, sir. Okay. Uh, it is one or the other. Maybe the first one, sir. Uh, when your parents uh, uh, choose the one for you. Now, right we're, we're not, you. none of us are going to be happy about giving up our freedom to choose, right? Yes, sir. Okay. However, why is it better before? Uh, because sir, uh, it's for for your own good, sir. That's why they just the right one for you. Now, let me ask you, because you see, you hear people talk today about, well, how do you know you're going to love that person? Well, that number one, that's because we view love as a noun not as a verb in our society how many single mothers are there many sir is their life hard yes sir yes okay what how many single mothers were there a hundred years ago uh no sir uh, i only when their husband died <laughs> 
Only when their husband died, right? Yes, sir. Now, question for you. Would it be better for a woman if single mothers were only widows and they were very rare? Would it be better for our society as a whole? It's better to be single and widow, sir, rather it's than... It's better if it's rare, right? Because yes, it's hard for the kids. It's hard for the woman. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. By the way, it's also hard for the man. Okay? Yes, Life is hard when we don't do things God's way. Now, I'm, by the way, I'm not advocating parents selecting your marriage, your partner. Let me be clear about that ahead of time, okay? However, in a society, because I want you to picture something. Picture it in your own mind. Your parents selected a spouse for you that you have never met. Okay. He's not the pogiest guy in the world, and she's not the most beautiful woman in the world. But 25 years later, she's taken, he's taken out your trash and painted your house, helped raise your children, and paid all the bills. She's made sure that there was food on the table. The children were healthy and clothed. Do you love that person? Yes, sir. But you weren't that you weren't excited the first time you met him. Why? Because character counts more than appearance. Right, Fred? Mm -hmm. And and a lot of times when a person marries because of appearance first and they try to find out about their character later, they're oftentimes disappointed. <laughs> and, you know, and it, it's a serious topic, but that's, see, I grew up in a society where, you know, the concept of the, you, your parents choosing you, I don't even know if it was part of our DNA or history. But with that said, that's what I did before I was a Christian. Most of the relationships that I had gotten into was based on attraction first and then learning about their character. And all of those relationships went to pot. That's okay. um, that's US terms for uh, didn't work out. Didn't work out. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, what if you've ever had your heart broken, raise your hand. <laughs> but the um, you you're exempt sorry sir no i said nalin okay you have you raised your hand so you've had your heart broken nalin and vanessa the only ones that didn't give us a hand <laughs> but we've all but had our heart I, broken go ahead fred but but with that said um literally i would have to say god chose my wife that is that's been working out for the last 29 years and i say that literally because i had zero interest when first meeting my wife i had zero attraction to her but when we went on our first date because she asked me not because i asked her um after that i found out that wow she because i didn't know her uh, that well, but I found that she had such a godly character. And, and that is why after our first date, eight months later, we were engaged and eight months later, we were married and we've been married and I'm still happy to come home each and every day because I allowed God to choose her and not based on my previous mindset. I had to become a godly man to, first of all, even be open to that. Because in the past, if I wasn't attracted to a woman, there was zero chance that I would even go out with her. But my, God changed my mind. And literally, he chose her, put us together like, 
like just because we were in the same church and she needed someone to take her to the uh, Christmas party. And she didn't even have an interest in me. She was uh, her, our, uh, one of the ladies in the church inspired her. So like literally we had zero attraction to each other and boom. So uh, not that that's gonna work out for everyone, but it, it is an option. Okay. Now, I have a question for you guys. Sorry, I got us on a sidebar. We ended up talking about grown-up topics today instead of the book of Genesis. Is anybody upset about me? It's all okay? Because what are we talking about? God's plan, right? Fred, you good? Yeah. All right. Anna, you good? Vanessa? Larissa? Elaine. Okay. Wilma. Nalyn. Okay. Look, I want to be clear. We love all of you. Okay. And if some of you are like me and you've made a mistake, don't worry about it. Serve God and everything will work out. All right, yeah, everybody. So can, have a can I add to, to what you said? Go ahead, Fred. And I just would encourage that. I think that was just godly wisdom, that statement that you made. And that is choosing someone not because of appearance, because of character. That tip alone can, if we apply those who are not married, focus on that. Focus on a person's character, not their appearance first. If you do that, that could like save you a lifetime of trouble. And the best thing is that your Bible, the word of God will even help clarify what that character should be. It even is like your guiding light, because if you allow your heart to be the guiding light, then likely it's going to steer either to not the proper character or focus on just appearance first. So yeah. I think that's godly advice and godly wisdom. Okay, let me stop the broadcast.